Good morning sa inyong lahat, mga kaibigan, mga kapatiran. Welcome sa ating another episode sa ating God's Word for Today devotional. And dito na tayo sa Acts chapter 6 and basahin ko ito sa ating Tagalog na Biblia. And first uh, seven verses, Acts chapter 6 verse 1 to 7. Nang mga araw ng ito, nang dumarami ang bilang ng mga alagad, Nagreklamo ang mga Helenista laban sa mga Hebreo sapagkat ang kanilang mga babaing balo ay napababayaan sa pang-araw-araw na pamamahagi. Tinawag ng dalaw- labindalawa ang buong kapuluman ng mga alagad at sinabi, Hindi nararapat na aming pabayaan ang salita ng Diyos at maglingkod sa mga hapag. Kaya mga kapatid, pumili kayo sa inyo ng pitong lalaking may mabuting pagkatao. puspos ng Espiritu at ng karunungan na aming maitatalaga sa tungkuling ito. Samantalang kami bilang aming bahagi ay mag-uukol ng aming sarili sa pananalangin at sa paglilingkod sa salita. Na siya ng buong kapunungan sa kanilang sinabi at pinili nila si Esteban, lalaking puspos ng pananampalataya at ng Espiritu Santo kasama sina Pilipi, Prokuro, Nicanor, Timon, Parminas, at si Nicholas na isang naging hudiyo na taga Antioquia. Kanilang pinaharap sila sa mga apostol at sila ipanalangin at ipinatong ang kanilang mga kamay sa kanila. Patuloy na lumaganap ang salita ng Diyos at dumaming lubha ang bilang ng mga alagad sa Jerusalem at napakaraming pare ng sumunod sa pananampalataya. We've seen a tremendous growth sa unang local assembly or local church sa Jerusalem, uh, simulan si Jerusalem, composed primarily of the Jews and the converts there. This growth ay nakikita natin ay it was preceded by chains and it has also resulted to some change. So, yun ang focus natin sa ating God's Word for Today devotional. Growth and chains. Hindi po pwedeng may growth na wala pong pagbabago ang mapapansin natin. There was a significant spiritual movement in the lives of the apostles and the rest of the church so that ating nababasa that the church grew exponentially. A significant change should happen in us kung gusto nating tayo ay lalago. Hindi ba? We must undergo some changes in our lives. Change in the way we think perspective, the way we look at things and our ministry. Kailangan tayo ready to change ourselves in order to grow. Merong kasabihan that the person who continues to do what he's doing and yet he expects a different result is a fool. Hindi ba tama itong statement na to? Kung patuloy tayo sa ating ginagawa and then nag expect tayo na iba yung resulta, anong masasabi ba? We are a fool. However, the numerical and spiritual growth of the believers during this time had inevitably bred new problems. Kasi po, ating nababasa sa verse 1, there were a group of Hellenists who complained. They were really grumbling. They were like murmuring. And ang kanilang complaint po ay ang mga Hebrews have neglected to feed the widows or to give the dealer distribution of food to the widows. Now, this was the effect because of so many people. So more people means more needs to attend to. That's why when the ministry grew or grows, there will be a lot of people needed also to attend to their growing needs because growth means many people to attend to. Maraming pangangailangan. That's why this is part of the reality of growing in our ministry. And perhaps 
hindi pinatulot ng Panginoon sa atin yung lalago ang ating ministry because we are not ready to assume all these changes and sacrifices to make. And we don't have a ready structure, especially people, to meet people's need. Dito sa ating nababasa, what the disciples did or the apostles did is that he did challenge the people, they gathered the people, and they have to decide. So they decided to pick out from among themselves seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, who will attend to this duty of ministering to the Hellenists, widows. Kaya nga, they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas. Si Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. The apostles laid their hands upon them for this ministry as they began this ministry. Now, let's take note that though this passage doesn't use the word diakonia, this is the establishment of the office of a deacon in the church. Mm -hmm. The word diakonia, galing ito sa Griego, ang kaulugan nito ay ministry. The, the word ministry comes from this word diakonia, specifically referring to the role of the deacon so collect and disperse resources. So yung mga logistical needs of the church, especially mga financial and all the other logistical na mga gagawin ay ginagawa niyan sa mga deacons. Later, Paul outlined, especially in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8 to 13, the qualifications for deacons. Most of which deal with integrity. Na sila po ay, they are honest and talagang they are, they are faithful and yung character nila ay we, we cannot be questioned. While deacons need to be spiritually mature, as any church leader should be, the apostles saw to it that they will handle the finances honestly and responsibly. Yes, hindi lang na they were spiritually matured, but kailangan din, marunong sila din sa kanilang ginagawa. So let's not only look for people who are matured spiritually, but gifted ba sila sa ginagawa nila? The apostles themselves were very clear that they won't attend to every need of the church by, by themselves handling over it directly. They said, it's not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. No matter how the church grew in number, no matter how many were the needs, hindi nagbabago yung priorities nila. They did not grapple with a lot of things. They were just very focused on the ministry of the word and prayer. Priority nila yun. I think ito po yung kailangan natin ipray sa mga simkasimbahan na natin. Because the leaders, particularly the pastors, cannot do everything. They can do something, but they cannot do everything. And they must do the most important thing for them. Yes, the preaching, itong mga ginagawa niyang apostles ay primary roles ng mga pastor. And let's uphold them in your prayer. So as a result, because of this, the church grew. The church continued to progress. Apparently, we needs are met by suitable and dedicated people who are doing the ministry according to their giftedness had caused the church to grow. The disciples had delegated the work which made them laser focus on the word and prayer. Prayer and word ministry are the primary ministries of the pastor in our churches. Hindi ibig sabihin na hindi sila magagawa noon, pero hindi dapat nila isakripisyo itong primary role. This two ang priority nila. And like the apostles, dapat po tayo ay hindi maging jack of all trades and master of none. Where God has placed us with our own giftings, let's bloom 
mayroon ko sabihan na ang Rolling Stone cannot gather moss. Kung ang isang bato ay palaging umiikot, hindi ang algae or ang moss makadikit. And I think this picture sa isang tao who is not settled in one ministry because he's but doing a lot of things. And ito po yung uh, babala sa atin that we cannot really do everything but we can do something especially in the ministry where God has planted us. Let's bloom. And I encourage each one of us to discover our gifts in order that we'll be able to serve the Lord effectively. And may we are joyful serving the Lord using our giftedness. Well, the church grew not because of the apostles alone, but because there were deacons, there were others who stepped up in faith to assist the leadership, to um, recognize na hindi madala na mga apostoles sa kanilang sarili ang lahat ng gawain, kundi mag-step up tayo, tulungan natin sila, we will do this in line or in subservient to their leadership. And what a beauty that we can see in the in the lives of the first um, church na nakikita natin na although they were growing in number, and in fact, they sold everything and they pulled their own resources to meet everyone's need. Iba nang babasa natin yan earlier. But that doesn't mean that every problem will be solved. There will be always a problem. But thankfully, as a healthy church, they address this problem and that's how the church grow. Hindi mo wala yung problema, but the church is always evolving into something how to really handle the growing problems of the church. And that, that's a mark of a healthy church. Not a perfect church, but a healthy church. And nakikita natin may mga maraming mag-step out to serve and to fill the gaps. Maybe that ikaw yun, ako yun, that we will fill in the gaps in order to meet others' need. Because the church is not just one people or one group of people. May God bless us. Manalangin tayo. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Help us to I recognize, Lord, our limitations as the apostles recognize their limitations. But you have clarified to them they were so clear about their priorities. At sa amin din, Painoon, help us to recognize uh, sa aming mga priorities according to our giftings or sa aming mga ministries na sana po we are in such a ministry or place where we can effectively do because doon po kami may mga gifts Lord. Doon po kami na magkaroon ng effective way of ministering and we can fulfill this according to your power. Thank you dear Father for this example of the apostles and the early church. May you continue to bless us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Thank you.